What's going on everyone? Steven here, back with a new Cuphead tutorial for you. This is video four, or episode four. What I'm going to go over today is finding your XY coordinates so that you can move around on the map here anywhere you want without having to worry about, you know, defeating certain bosses or whatever. Those of you who have played the game enough know that it's very odd for my character to be standing where it is right now without having the stair, the stairs here from beating this or whatever else I needed to beat to be here. Um, luckily in this game, it's pretty simple to put in your own XY coordinates. It can be a challenge to get a solid working cheat with that. I'm not going to go too deep in this one, so let's just get started with it here. So basically you have coordinates related to moving up and down, left and right. X and Y um, in a game like this. So the way the artwork is, it's a it looks like a 2.5 D perspective, right? But just imagine that all you see is the character moving around. Pretend none of the art is there and it's just a black background. And you're moving around on a flat black background, right? You're just moving left and right, up and down. That's it. So you could think of it like that. So we're going to try to find those two coordinates. And what that will allow us to do is place ourselves anywhere we want in this map. Those values tend to be precise. So we're going to look for floats. All right. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is an unknown initial value scan. First scan. All right. I'm going to move a little bit and search for a changed value. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Now I'll do some unchanged value searches, or scans rather. See how it's whittling down pretty quickly? Let's move a little bit. Oh, yep, yeah, let's do changed. All right, unchanged. Changed. All right, now it's unchanged because I didn't move yet. So I've got my hotkey set up for that. All right, it's okay that that came up in this game. All right, so we have 85 results, still unchanged. We see some things changing. All right, the values tend to not be ones where you have uh, precision extending, where you have the E and then some number of precision past that. So what you can do is select those ones that are like that and say, remove selected addresses. There should be more here, yep. All of these, we can remove those. All right, now let's say we have these 39 results, all right? What you can do is take some subset of this results or all of it if you want. You know, this helps whenever you can only whittle it down to maybe thousands of results, all right? So you could try to start with, um, maybe like the bottom half of results here. Let's take this many, all right? And I'm gonna go create header and just click okay. And now you can click and drag all these results that you've highlighted down here, all right? And then toggle this and you'll see all those addresses. Now what we can do is we're gonna toggle all of these and see if it locks our character in place. So toggle selected records. All right, there we go. So one of these values is the value that we're interested in. Okay, so let's deselect. All right, and then we'll select about half of these and go toggle selected records, toggle selected records, which will untoggle them. All right, now let's try to move. We're still locked. That's good. That means that of these that are still toggled, one of those is the value we're interested in. None of these is so we can delete those oh, click back in here delete all right let's deselect this half or untoggle them rather let's try to move still looking good we can delete those ones that we just untoggled all right now we can just start untoggling one at a time and right, our characters moving even though we have some crazy looking stuff going on there so 
that may or may not have been related to one that we want. So let's just start toggling one by one. Let's toggle this one and see what happens. All right, it's not that one. Let's try this one. See a little bit of funkiness happening. Let's try this one. Nothing. Now let's toggle that one. There we go. That's our one. Keeping us locked in place that much. Okay. So now what we can do, now that we found that, okay, see how that number changes? As we move down, it goes negative into the farther negative range. As we move up, we head towards positive range. Okay. So now what we could presumably do is put in a value manually. Let's put in negative five and see if it takes us outside of the boundaries. And it does. Now we're moving around outside the map. All right, and typically x, y values are right beside each other in memory. So let's um, go right click here and say browse this memory region, All right? And see this number? This is here. All right, it took us there. You might not see this view, so you might have to right click and say display type and select float. All right. Um, so it should be um, the other coordinate should be right beside this or right near it. So let's move up one. And perhaps it's this one. So let's move left and right and let's watch this value. See how it's changing? Okay. Let's try a value of, let's right click and say, add this to the address list. Just say, okay. All right. And it goes towards positive to the right. So let's go negative one. All right. Now we're back on the map. So there we go. By changing those two values manually, we can place ourselves anywhere we want to be on the map, um, you know, which could help you tackle certain levels if you wanted to without having to beat other ones. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's just a quick little lesson showing you how you can play with XY coordinates. Um, it can be a lot tougher than that. This game has the rare sort of scenario where we can just put in a value and it accepts that value and we're there. A lot of times you get instructions that are writing the real value to the address at a point um, before it takes in whatever you're changing it to. So that can be a pretty tough hack to make depending on what you want to do. So uh, what you could do is find the base addresses for these values. That way you don't have to search for them again. Let's do that. All right. Let's, uh, let's see what writes to this address. Okay. We've got that. EDI plus 30 plus three zero is at this point of execution, this coordinate. So presumably when we do the same with this, Maybe EDI plus 2C will be this one. So let's go, or I'm sorry, I had this on my other monitor <laughs> without realizing it. Uh, yeah, so here, <laughs> you're probably like, what, are, what is he talking about? Uh, EDI plus 30 here, this is here. So let's do the same thing here. Um, find what writes to this address. Bring it back over here, and there we go. EDI plus 2C, all right? So what we could do is go show disassembler, and I have that, where do I have that? Where's my disassembler? There we go, okay. And from this point here, see how we have EDI plus 2C here? We could basically jump in on any of these instructions that we want sort of within this spot. Let's just do it here, tools, Auto-assemble, template, AOB injection. Okay. Let's call this cohorts. All right. And now what we can do is 
we'll uh, global alloc a um, let's just say base cohorts. I'll just put a one there. All right, and then at base cohorts dd zero. Okay. Um, and now what we can do, basically with this, we're creating a memory address to store the address that's in EDI into our own memory address so that we can always reference that. All right, so now what we can do is move into the memory address of base cohorts EDI, what's in EDI, which is the base of our player and then it offsets 2C and 3.0, those will be our X, Y. All right, so now that we've done that, we could say file assigned to current cheat table. All right, and then we can add two addresses. One will be base cohorts plus 2C. Let's just say it's X, I'm not sure which one it is at the moment. Float, say okay. We can just control C, control V, click paste. Double click there, change that to Y. Double click here, change this to three zero. I guess we could have just double click there and then changed it to Y here. Say OK. And now we can group that with this script here and name this coordinates. And then once you enable the script here, now we should see these change to these addresses here, which we did. So now, whenever you restart the game and you come back in, then you don't have to worry about manually finding those values anymore. You can just enable the script, and there are your coordinates. So just a quick way to show you how to do that. And then from this point, you could try to futz with instructions and create other types of cheats as you see fit. So anyway, um, that's going to do it for this video. Check out the other ones in the series if you haven't yet, and check out some other videos if you're interested in game cheats and all that stuff. So give it a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will talk to you all in the next video. Take care.